So I still went to di whatever. Along the way, I ran into electronic. How's it going? Did you eat the apple? I mean, did you find Shurik? No sign of him still. Oh, wait, that was me. Never mind. Don't worry. We'll find him. I tried to cheer him up. Too much time has passed. I just, I, I, I just got to keep searching. What about dinner? No, finding Shurik is more important. He muttered thoughtfully. And he went off into the forest. Pioneers crowded the doorway. I quickened my pace, trying not to be the last one in line, at least not today. And I was lucky, in the far corner was an absolutely empty table. I took my dinner and quickly sat at the table. Tonight's dinner consisted of a fruit soup and a pair of buns. My own... No, excuse me. To s this set surprised me at first, but tasted was actually nice. I considered... I concentrated on eating. Nina, look. There's three chairs. Nina and Miku uh, sat in front of me. Are these seats taken? Wondered Lena. No, no, no. Please, take a seat. Of course, I wish she was alone. Thank you. As soon as Lena sat there, Zena... Zoe, excuse me, jumped out from her back. I'll sit here. There's no need. No places left. Uh, sure, make yourself at home. I muttered sorrowfully. What? Nothing. To tell the truth, I wanted to reduce the whole company to just Lena, though neither Miku or Zoe was causing much trouble. Except one of them was too talkative and the other was too arrogant. But nevertheless, they were absolutely harmless, especially compared to some of the others I could name. Oh, oh, I, 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 I forgot my key. Don't worry, take mine. I was surprised by Miku's short reply. Do you two sleep each other? Sleep with each other? Uh, of course. Didn't you know? Together on the cabin, and we're most. I mean, the furthest one from here. I mean, the one that's all furthest away. I mean, the one that's the furthest distance from our current location. I mean, the one that's on the edge of camp. I mean, the one that that. I would have been surprised if someone told me that Lena lived with Sylvia, or Zoe, at the worst. But I mean, even electronic. But silent, shy Lena with the excessively talkative Miku as a pair. That, that's really a surprise. Did you find Shirk, you asshole? It's strange. Zoe is disturbed by someone else's problems. Um, no. Surely he's at the village buying cigarettes. Or vodka. She snorted. Um, village? At the moment, the conversation got much more interesting. Got a problem with villages, sir? Zoe looked amused. You mean there's a village nearby? I think so. She said uncertainly. I looked at Lena and Muku, but they were busy with their meals and did not pay attention to our conversation. You mean you don't know exactly? Why should I care? Zoe... Stared at her disc. Mm, excuse me. But there must be something nearby. Listen. Listening. I don't know. Will you let me eat, please? Seems like I won't get anything from her. <laughs> In more ways than one, probably. Though there's a chance that she really doesn't know. The remaining time was spent listening to Miku talk about some kind of nonsense. I was just getting slowly... Mad in silence. Honestly, the first thing I did after getting out was to inhale a great breath of fresh air. The sun was setting. I decided to take a walk. Take a walk. In the highly unlikely that I would find anything more exciting to do than the rest of me, that was something interesting could arise unexpectedly. I was approaching the square when I heard a loud bang. Sorry, that was my best bang bang. Hold on. Boom. <laughs> Okay, it seemed like something had exploded. I was paralyzed. Am I in a hostile environment not knowing the rules and laws of this place? It would be better for me to run. But at the same time, I was, you know, curious. Probably I would have just kept standing there, but someone grabbed my hand. It was Olga. What are you standing there for? Let's go see what happened. By the way, my mouth was there naturally. You walked into it. 
can't you ever manage without me? I begged her pitifully. It shouldn't be anything serious, I, uh, I hope. Gendo was on fire. This Gendo's on fire! I am drinking. Mm. When we came to the square, there was already a crowd of pioneers. Olga viciously pushed with the crowds and approached the crime scene. Obviously, someone had tried to blow up Gendo. I think it was, um... Wow, I actually forgot his name. I mean, he's a freaking main character. Shinji! It was Shinji! But the attacker failed. The moment was still... Or was it... Anyways, Asuka. The moment was still standing upright. Standing upright. There was only a dim traces of the pedestal. She looked angry. Who the hell did this? Heads will roll. What? She looked over the crowd of pioneers. Surely it wasn't done by any organized terrorist organization. These guys all came here just to look at what happened. I noticed Ulsa and Alice in the crowd. And it looked like our camp leader also noticed them. You, you two, come here now. They approach reluctantly. Why is it always me? If you think so, show me your hands, Alice's last name. What's wrong with them? They're dainty little things. What? It looked, I looked closer and saw that they were smeared with black. Now, now it's clear. What did you make the bomb with? The junior terrorist seemed to hesitate over whether or not to confess, but then blurted out proudly, active carbon, saltpeter, and sulfur, because you all will suffer. What? Wait a minute. Carbon? Carbon that she stole from the first aid kit. Why exactly the monument? What did this honored man ever do to you? The fighter of the rights of the people. This lovely statue of a hunk of a man. Sorry. Ellipses. Also belittered Alice. I could hardly imagine how long she would have kept scolding Alice if Electronic hadn't popped out at that very moment, shouting, I found it! I found the G-spot! What? Everyone turned towards him. He had a boot in his hand. Here, this is what this all is all a boot. Ha, ha. Electronic boastfully shook it over his head. It's Shurik's boot. Okay, calm down. Tell us in detail where you found it. It was in the meat grinder. In the forest, on the way to the old camp, whispers ran through the pioneers. It's the old camp. Oh god, the old camp. Oh camp. Oh god. Oh, ah. Sorry. I'm. Oh, you see there? I I called it ahead of time because I already played this once. Are you sure? Absolutely. What's so special about the old camp? I joined in the conversation. It's it's nothing special, really. No one was murdered there by a guy wearing a hockey mask. No one was. She stammered. <laughs> One of Seattle's legend tells of the story of a young camp leader's ghost living there. She fell in love with a pioneer. Camp leader falling in love with a pioneer? Hmm? Hmm? But he rejected her. I wouldn't reject you. And so she killed herself. She committed Harry Curie. Hi! Hi! You like hot dogs? No one's going to get that reference because I do a horrible Harry Carey impersonation. Not only that, I'm doing a Will Farrow impersonation of the legendary cub announcer with a kitchen knife. The next day, the boy was hit by a bus. Ulsa ran out of the crowd and began to show pictures of the crime scene. Bus. I refrain from asking about the route number. But science doesn't acknowledge the existence of ghosts, so we have nothing to be afraid of. Uh, anyways, somebody should go there. The crowd started to thin out. Olga, ah, 
Ah, Olga, it's almost night. You maybe we should go tomorrow. I turned around and saw Sylvia and Lena. What if at night he's raped? What uh, if he's at night, Someone hap something happens to him? You know, a ghost having your way with you is weird. What? No, today, right now. By the way, where is this place? Electronic roughly described to me the direction and told me the story of the old camp. The camp leader looked at me attentively. If you think that I... You're the only man here. What about the bastard I was just talking to? Trust me, I seen him take off his clothes. He's a man also. A well-endowed man, more so than me. He's a bigger man than me. Take him! What? I <laughs> looked around the area. Of course. Electronic was quick to flee. I still didn't want to walk in the woods alone. The three of you, come with me. We'll have a foursome. It'll be awesome. If you asked me, I would go with Sylvia. Look at this. Lena. Oh, wait a minute. Oh. Oh. Sorry. I just realized something. Lena, if you notice, is darkened. I picked Lena last time. So does that mean my previous choices are a different color than choices I haven't picked? Wow. I did not know that. By the way, I want to go with her. But again, I'm going for Sylvia this time. We will. She agree. I looked at Sylvia. Yeah, bastard. She paid no attention to me. Looks like it's not my day. Am I going there alone? Olga looked thoughtfully. Perhaps you're right. We'll go there tomorrow morning. Just me, you, and a romantic trip. We stood there in silence for a time. Then dispersed around the camp. Everyone seemed to forget about Alice and her terrorist act, maybe due to the minor damage it caused. Together with the camp leader, I walked towards the cabin. I tried to think why Shirk would go to the old camp. He is interested in robots and cybernetics, not scary stories of ghosts. Why does that boot have to do with this? I remembered how I decided to wait until something extraordinary would happen. And then I realized, this is it! Olga, I think I'll have a walk before bed. Just not a long one. Yep, I know, we already lost one cabin, you don't want to lose two. Campers, excuse me. Gendo was still on fire and no one's had put him out yet. When I reached the scare, I understood that the hanging around the forest or some other strange place might not be that scary, but doing so in the dark. I don't want to return to Olga's cabin, but I had to find a flashlight. For instance, there was one in the inf infirmary. I was glad. Fashion magazine. Ellipses pointed out that there's a flashlight everywhere. You could have just asked. The flashlight was found quickly, and in a few minutes, I was again standing at the square, pulling myself together. I just had to make the final decision before I entered the forest. Moving past the pioneers' cabins down the forest path towards the abandoned camp, I set forth. Electronic told me that the old building was built immediately after the war. It looked like a kindergarten, or like a barracks, I expected, and definitely could hold fewer pioneers than today's camp. It had been abandoned for about 20 years. Ellipses agreed with the numbers.